Welcome to the virtual launch event for the HPE 5G Lab. Located in Fort Collins, Colorado, the HPE 5G Lab provides a standards-based environment for testing, validation and proof-of-concept demonstrations of multi-vendor 5G solutions, a neutral proving ground for independent solutions providers. And to mark the virtual opening of the HPE 5G Lab, we are hosting two special panel discussions, bringing together HPE executives and their partner companies. Before we start, Jeff, can you give us some background, please, as to HPE's strategy towards the 5G core? Yeah, certainly, Guy. So, um, you know, when we were contemplating what we were going to do in 5G, it became very apparent to us from uh, the start that we needed to take a clean sheet of paper and really design our 5G solution from the ground up, taking advantage of um, the inherent and native features within cloud technology. So that's exactly what we've done. And our strategy has always been in HPE to be a partner forward company. So we take um, the best things that we do and we combine them with um, our partners and the things that they do the best. And through that effort, we have created an open, multi-vendor 5G solution that can very rapidly de be deployed and frankly be modified for a particular customer need for uh, service providers around the world. Richard, what is HPE's approach to the 5G core network? When we looked at 5G, we decided that time is right now for a different approach to building 5G networks. The, the service-based architecture was pointing us into a direction of something that is much more cloud native, much closer to IT. And this is what historically we've been doing at HP, uh, is to take IT tools and technologies and bring them into the telco world. So this was something that resonated a lot with us and we decided to, to fully embrace a cloud native and open approach. We also recognized that it was important to work with partners, to partners that have a, a, a like-minded approach to cloud native and the use of open source and work with them upfront to integrate the solutions before we bring them to the telco operators. Back in March of this year, we launched the HP 5G core stack, which is exactly doing this. And now at this point in time, we're launching the HP 5G lab to further advance the, the possibilities of doing a, a multi-vendor and open network in 5G. Well, let's ask your, your partners. Amit, let's start with Affirmed Networks. How are you involved and, and what's your view for the next steps of 5G core interoperability and automation? You know, we at Affirm Networks have always believed in the, in the power of a rich, diverse ecosystem, which brings the best of breed solutions into an ecosystem, which then creates the best of suite uh, solution for the service providers, right? Uh, you know, 10 years uh, into this journey, first to virtualize service provider networks, and now with the cloud native offering, uh, you know, providing, a, you know, a microservices based uh, decomposed architecture, you know, of a very key value tenet of a solution that goes into service provider networks is pre-integration into an open ecosystem that is then ready to be actually deployed into an MNO environment, right? So this is a very welcome uh, uh, happening for the industry as a whole. So we welcome this a lot. Well, let's continue this theme. Uh, Shuva, I'm gonna ask you about your experience with working with the multi-vendor 5G core. So uh, from the service provider side, uh, we are seeing uh, increased demand on a multi-vendor environment because I think for security reasons and uh, for innovations, the operators don't want to do vendor lock-in. They are looking for 5G to be multi-vendor environment. And we're seeing, seeing increasing demand on that uh, for uh, integrating with different vendors. And Azar, um, as I understand it, Red Hat is providing part of, of the infrastructure. You're, you're providing your container platform as a service, is that right? 
first of all, Red Hat's route to market is through partners. So in this case too, we've worked very hard with our partners, with HPE, with the firm, with CASA and others uh, to actually build this particular platform so that they can onboard their network functions on top of that particular platform for, for 5G. And this is OpenShift as a container platform. And what we have done is built it tuned it to allow these things uh, to run much much more efficiently and much more smoothly. Jeff, well, why do we need this multi-vendor interoperability testing rather than just individual testing against the agreed standards? If you don't want to have a completely vertically integrated black box, um, our customers are expecting that we will have integrated tested and validated configurations before we go to lab entry um, within their environments. And so that's a fundamental value that this lab can bring. Amit, how do you see the, the, the importance and relevance of, of Cloud Native here? Cloud Native actually is the means to meet the promise of 5G, right? And by, by that, what I mean is, you know, we're talking about massive bandwidth, pervasive computing, uh, every handset, every device being always on, communicating not just to the network, but actually communicating with each other, right? You know, how do you actually scale to that level of ubiquitous pervasive computing without the tenets of what we do with cloud native? So, you know, think about this. With that grand vision, if we try to retrofit, right? And, you know, there are terms that, you know, you hear about, you know, you know you know, cloud washing, for example, right? You know, actually retrofitting a VNF architecture into CNF. All of those, you know, these are humongous penalties that you end up paying. These are humongous tax that you end up paying to actually now convert into a quote unquote cloud type architecture. And, and, and Jeff, we've heard a lot of benefits there of going cloud native in 5G core. Um, how, how do you think an open cloud native model improves the security of 5G networks? So the cloud native model um, allows you to break um, the network into small microservice components and um, you have a tremendous amount of observability of what's going on between the interplay of all of the different services and be able to eliminate uh, bad actors or uh, other problems that you would see going on within the, co the context of the cloud native core. Let's turn to OpenNet. How important is Open 5G to the industry? It allows us to deliver a truly cloud native uh, platform that can sit with uh, both private and public cloud um, platforms integrate into their paths and uh, opens up a huge market in terms of where and what we can deliver and then into what verticals. And I, I think that's key to, to what we've done and to um, where certainly we want to go in terms of our innovation. And Shiv, what's Metaswitch's view? Because I know you've been doing some great work on containerized network functions. It is absolutely critical uh, for us to have an open ecosystem, uh, an open supply chain, so that enterprises have the choices to, to procure these uh, networks from a wide uh, set of vendors uh, with different choices and flexibility that, that they deserve. Jeff, picking up on this, this thread of innovation, the need for telcos to adopt more, more service models and innovation in services, um, you know, what, are the, what are the new applications and workloads that we, we might uh, expect to see coming out of HPE's 5G lab? Um, I would imagine that you'll see a whole new era of uh, work being done where people are. There will be less of a tie to the office. You'll start to see a gig economy uh, start to emerge where things like uh, surgeons no longer have to be tied to a hospital. With robotic surgery, they can actually service many different medical systems and hospitals. You know, these are some of the musings that uh, I have that I, I think we could really see become a reality here in the future. You know, uh, to the point that Jeff just made, this is a, I mean, there's, there's a term guy we used, uh, you know, within, uh, within a firm, right? It's uh, unleash the developers. And now think about this, what we just did. We actually allowed the developer to go out and write their apps, 
not worry about where they're going to be run because that's what you know all of us here on this discussion right that's what we're working about you know we're talking about an architecture that is so flexible it is so pervasive and it actually runs on every form factor right you know we could be running on any form of edge core cloud hybrid or public and then let the developers write their apps and it can be run at the optimal place for the best user experience right and Niall what about you what what new applications uh, might you expect to see as a result of all this collaboration the open edge focuses always on uh, control and monetization and what what we're seeing is with the ability of a, a slice based approach the the ability now is there to uh, enable multiple different types of industry, enterprise, IoT, um, by being able to deliver varying KPIs, varying latency models, varying uh, throughput models, quality models, and all of these new capabilities that, uh, that can be deployed rapidly through blueprinted slice mechanisms is going to enable us uh, the ability to roll out these new services. So the potential for application developers, as Richard said, coming in and uh, supplying a whole new set of service type capability is, is, is going to be hugely important. And Shiv, what new workloads and applications do you hope to see as a result of this collaboration? What the lab enables us to do is make sure that we are able to use the same Kubernetes or container frameworks to deliver these networks very quickly and, and work right out of the box, right? So the applications, are definitely driving the need for consuming the 5G network. And what, it took, just to conclude from our perspective, Open 5G Lab helps us make the network consumption very easy.